Peyton Manning, and then there's another one who's done it. Who's that? Tobin Rowe, 1957, Detroit Lions. Yeah, so those guys, the only four with four touchdown passes and a touchdown run in the playoffs. On second down, here's Ryan. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if, while the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. First and ten, here's Brady. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. It's a gain of 14, the New England first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. Okay, Bart, are you ready for Brandon's off-the-wall stat question of the week here? Well, is that any different than any other time? <laughs> no, no it's, no, it's not. But Chris Hogan yes. and Julio Jones actually had the exact same numbers in the conference title games. Nine catches, 180 yards, two touchdowns. Touchdowns. Who did it better? Wow, that's a great question. Listen, the easy trade answer is they both did it so exceptionally well, you just called a tie. But I'm, but I'm breaking the tie. That, yeah. I'm breaking the tie. Julio Jones did it better. That short slant where he ended up running over two or three people and taking it to the end zone, that was the clincher right there. Julio Jones did it a little bit better than Chris Hogan. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Now Brady. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Chris Hogan, 49 yards. And the Patriots are an extra point away from going out in front. And he's got it up and through. Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And the gears will shift here as Atlanta will take over on offense. And speaking of gear shifting, a new change in Atlanta. They're going into a new stadium next year. But what a way to say goodbye to the Georgia Dome, huh? They closed out in the style that they wanted to and the way that they played throughout the 2016 season. And I go back to when they opened up in preseason, the first game ever in the Georgia Dome. They threw a bomb on their first series for a touchdown, and it felt the exact same way against Green Bay in the NFC Championship game. It opened in 92, and you're right. It finishes in dramatic fashion. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Oh, he fakes a spike. And it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. And the Patriots getting ready to go again on offense. And, Charles, you and I get a stat pack before every game. At the top of this one for the Patriots, the first note was that they're on their way to their ninth Super Bowl appearance. That is something. Most of any team. And eight of those since 2001. Would that be yep. accurate? That because accurate. the first one was Super Bowl 20. That didn't go very well against the Bears. <laughs> But since that time, they've become the predominant team going to Super Bowls and winning them. What a franchise. Brady to throw on second down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. LeGarrette Dargan, and it's third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. 
but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure. And he's going to go down. Back across midfield, he sacked at the 46. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I'm here, my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. On first and 10, it's Ryan. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Give him three on the play, and it'll be a second down. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> and this is Gabriel on the catch. A good pick up there, a 22. Our receivers really gain stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. But there's no doubt in my mind, partner, that he's one of the best receivers in the league, if not the best. And the argument's going to be short. It's a small sample. Julio Jones right there at the top because of his ability to do everything. Catch it, run it, his strength running patterns. How about the way he knocks people off of routes and continues them and finishes in the end zone? He did all of that against Green Bay. A beautiful toe tap in the end zone for one touchdown. And then stiff arming tacklers down the sideline. At 73 yards to the house, he was something. And it's interesting you mentioned the toe tap. That people thought maybe his effectiveness would be limited because of a toe injury. We no. saw no ill effects against Green Bay in the NFC Championship game. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Now Ryan on second down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Dante Hightower. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And the ball backed way. And play a stop. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So after the INT, it's Brady. He's going to air it out deep for Hogan. He's got a man complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Charles, so many of the Patriots know what the Super Bowl feels like. Martellus Bennett, a guy, eighth year, first Super Bowl trip, and after the game, you could tell he was a little elated, doing some dances with the cheerleaders. And the bomb bombs, the bomb bombs were going everywhere, weren't they? They were. But the interesting part was his observation later on on social media where he said, I was out of my mind excited. I looked around at a lot of the guys on the Patriots team. They're like, yeah, you know, we've done this before. Okay, <laughs> We can be cool about it. But think about his impact this year. Supposed a team came the feature tight end after Gronk's injury. They are so glad that they picked him up.
So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. And he missed it. It's no good. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. And okay, so much for our halftime.